Hello everyone and welcome to my first ever video. Today I'm going to be playing From the Depth, which is a game about building satellites, battleships, submarines, planes, jets, and fighting against enemy factions at war in the campaign mode. And currently there are five different campaigns. There's Netter or Neater, which is the normal campaign you can build as big as you want, sh giant ships, you can build whatever you want. Galu, which is a smaller campaign, meaning that you're limited to a smaller building size, you have a volume limit, and also it only has three enemy factions, and this one has seven. Dangerous Waters, which is a campaign about World War II where you don't actually build ships you take a ship that you built in a blueprint stage and then eventually build it in a bay or dock Ashes of the Empire which is Grant ground base and tanks planes are the only thing you could really make and finally a cold lock Christmas is a Christmas time limited campaign with Christmas themed ships and fortresses so that one's fun too. I'm going to be playing the vehicle designer where you have infinite resource. You don't have to worry about any enemies coming. You can build as long as you want, as big as you want. And you can save your ship and then put it into the campaign or you can just play in this. So there's some really cool things about From the Depths. Like you have this huge, uh, Ability to customize everything you build. Cram cannons, there are so many things. To build a starter cannon, then you can make a super amazing cannon. Advanced cannons, you can make machine guns, you can increase the number of barrels, gauge increase. And let me just show you if I place down a firing piece. It says cannon using zero of the maximum number of components, which is 1,400. You can have 1,400 different components on a cannon to make it an actual cannon. If you add any more, I believe they will just not do anything. Um, so this is your starter ship and designer. It's just a boring old ship. I'm just gonna get rid of it. So the building in front of the depth is also really fun because there's a couple fun things about it. Like you have mirror mode, which is so, so handy. It will mirror whatever you build on one side of the ship to the other. So let's just build a starter ship out of wood. I'll just show you how to build a small starter ship. That would bring you through your first couple battles. So whatever I build on this side, it will now build on that side, which is extremely useful. And I don't think I've ever built a ship without it. And if you look down and hit F, it will fill in the area. I just have to wait for that one to be done. And I'm just going to show you how to make a basic hole. It won't be too impressive. It won't look that good. But it's going to be a basic hole that you're going to probably use in your first three or two bat, three or maybe eight battles, actually. It's just going to be a small starter ship that you can rely on to be useful and just start up the campaign mode with you. So, in order to make a base coal, all you want to do is kind of make stairs. You build out one layer, and then you build a layer of blocks on that outer layer, and then you kind of have this, what basically looks like a hole of a ship. And you can change it quite a bit. You have like, you can make it super pointy at the front, or you can do what I'm doing, which is make it kind of like become a smaller angle. And I personally like this design more than the pointy one. Because the pointy one doesn't really look battleship-like. So I'm just going to build up a basic hole for us to build our deck, our cannon, engine inside. Keeps the game three. So the difference between beams and normal blocks is, of course, they're different sizes, but beams have more health. Let's say this wooden block can take 50 shots of a certain type of cannon. 
A wooden beam times four could take four times as many shots as that. Because it's four times the amount. So the health on this is 120. And the health on this is 720. So it's much better increase on health. Whenever you can use beams, definitely use them. Also, while you're building, some easy controls are caps lock will bring your ship out of the water or it freeze it if it's a flyer so it doesn't have to move and you can easily edit it, which I do quite a bit because sometimes you have to like go under the ship to see is this symmetrical or build something down there. So it's extremely useful. And it's also useful because it's kind of just really annoying when your entire ship is rocking like this in the water. And so next, I think I'm gonna make the whole one block taller and then we're gonna start on the basic engine. So I'll just quickly finish up the hull. Boop, 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 three meters. And then put the two meter. And the one meter. Okay, that will be our final level. And now I'm just gonna fill in all of this with beams and then I'll make the back not so flat because I'm just gonna for now just put a beam right here. Yes, three beam. And then put a beam up here. I'm just gonna make it flat for now and then later we're gonna edit it and make it look more curved out maybe so just finish off that boop, boop. wait that's the right one okay so now it's just gonna be flat for now so the next thing I'm going to do is just quickly fill it all in and while that is happening I'm going to build the engine which I'm going to place right here uh, to make a basic engine on a starter ship you want to be fuel efficient, so it won't take too much fuel, but still generate power. A good amount of power for your ship. So, I'm just going to put down a fuel generator, well, engine and generator. Then you want to put down three or four crankshafts. I'll put down four. On the side of the crankshafts, you want to put down the cylinders, which are actually what generate power. So, we'll put on the cylinders. We'll also put them on the top of the crankshaft. Then over that, on the outer side of the cylinder, put down carburetors. These are extremely useful. You can either use these or fuel injectors, but I use carburetors because with carburetors, you can attach things that allow it to become much more efficient, such as the supercharger, which just all around increases the efficiency of how much, it decreases how much fuel it takes to produce energy. So I'm just gonna put as many of, the, of these as I can. And that looks like a pretty good engine. That's gonna be our starter engine. Now of course an engine needs fuel, which is the big downside of a fuel engine. They need fuel, which you can store in boxes, but in order to get fuel, you have to get it through a refinery. Now you can make ships. Now you don't have to worry about, yeah, sorry. You don't have to worry about this if you have centralized resource. All of your resource and fuel you can access from any time. You don't have to worry about. All you have to do is add on the boxes and every once in a while replace them so you get fuel. Now if you want a, if you're doing it in localized resource, which each ship has their own resource compartment depending on how many material storage boxes it has, it will have to refine the fuel or another way is making a specific sh ship used for refining the fuel and then it gives that fuel to other ships around it the fuel refinery is what refines the fuel of course and the only problem with the fuel refinery is if your ship rolls over too far it will just explode and it has a large explosion radius i think 
don't mark me on this, but I believe it's just as big as the tactical nuke. Or bigger. Because it will just destroy your entire ship. It's happened to me once. It was bad. So, for a fuel efficient engine, just. That's why you want a fuel efficient engine, pretty much. So, next up, we're going to build the propulsion system. So, we're going to build the propellers to turn and move forward. So, first, I'm just going to grab water, propellers. I may keep the back of this ship flat even though it won't look good it's just a starter ship so it doesn't matter way too much i'll put on two giant propellers or huge propellers and then put on a ton of small propellers and by the way you could buy um uh, from the depths on steam for twenty dollars but it is definitely worth it like I've played this game, I think, over 200 hours. It's way too fun. And if you want to buy it, it's just $20. Not that bad. And I would definitely recommend it. So, uh, some more things. Okay, so now we can move and turn backwards. We can turn left, right. So now we need something to control a ship, which is what you want the vehicle controller for. Just place this down wherever you want, and then put a chair behind it. And then sit yourself in the chair by hitting Q on the chair. And now you have control of the ship. You can go forward by hitting T. Why am I not, oh yes. Another thing that you have to do is change all the propellers to main. They're already on main, but for some reason you have to go over to them and open their GUI for them to start working. It's a weird glitch, and I hope they fix it soon, because it's kind of just annoying, but it's not that bad. And over here, uh, these are turning propellers. If I hit I, they should turn. Why? There we go. Okay, so now we can turn our ship. We can go forward, we can turn this way, we can turn the other way. Even though it rolls a lot, it still can turn. So in order to decrease how much your ship rolls, eventually over time, if you just add a weight on, it's gonna up, uh, level itself out. But just for now, I will just put on some jet stabilizers. They're kind of expensive, 30, Actually, they're not way too expensive, but they're definitely worth it while building a ship. This will decrease how much you roll. It stabilizes you. So I'm just going to put on uh, three or four on each side. You can also put this inside the ship, but have holes so that they can actually be used. So I'll just put some every once in a while. And I'll put one more at the very front. So now... The ship should not roll as much and just turn. Yep, that's definitely better. Okay, so now I'm just gonna quickly fill in all these holes that were not four meters long with the three meter beams, one block beams, or just blocks, and two meter beams. So I'm just going to quickly finish this up. Oh, and my have mirror mode on you see mirror mode sometimes don't make the mistake of building an entire ship then realizing you don't have mirror mode on i have done that once on a flyer and it basically took me twice as long i had to redo it all because it was unsymmetrical and something was wrong so definitely put mirror mode on before you build an entire ship so you don't just build half of it um okay so now we have a basic hole in deck. I'm just going to put a, just for decoration, I'm gonna put one block here to kind of make like a fence out of, what should I use? Is there anything good in miscellaneous? I usually use the water and I use the paddles because they look pretty good at like, I might do it right now too. They look like kind of like guardrails on a ship so that you don't fall over. Okay, I'll just quickly add these on. Beep. 
beep beep and when you come to the edges just completely skip that and then continue building and we're just gonna put some slopes there right now okay wood beam slope and we'll put it down there down there Okay, almost done. And then the rest of the ships are just gonna be this because I can't put paddles on. And now, and now this will be the end of the episode. In the next episode, we're gonna be building a cannon and weapon systems and i hope you enjoyed please leave a like and subscribe i will be doing more videos like this one about tutorials i'll do a playthrough on the game soon of the campaign mode and goodbye